So, I thought I'd give you a quick preview on what I'm actually going to eat today. Now, the point of this is to show you that what I'm eating actually isn't all that bad. So, it's not like I'm going out and purposely eating uh, absolute sugar loaded stuff like donuts and chocolate all the time. Majority of the food is actually quality. It's like potato, I like to show you. So, I've got your granola. It's usually relative, it's a gluten free as well. Uh, granola or muesli mix. So, low GI usually. Um, also got my yogurt as well. But stuff like your rice and halot and mince, your veggies, uh, mince, kind of like a stew mix. Heaps of veggies in there, lentils, rice again. That's a, all my meals are usually relatively the same, easier for preparation. Uh, coconut water probably could go something a bit more calorie dense, but for example, coconut water is relatively healthy. Uh, it's just got a bit, a bit of natural sugar in it. That's probably the worst it gets. Um, the calories aren't even that high, but going through one or two of these a day, the calories definitely add up, which obviously that's what I'm aiming for now. Um, even when I'm cutting, I definitely include my coconut water because it's great to get your electrolytes in. It's like a uh, Powerade you know, without as much sugar. Also got my 200 gram of nuts, which is the rest of my, uh, my nuts. I'm gonna have to go get some more. But this is it, guys. All my meals for today. Oop. Almost missed one. All my meals for today. There is what I'm gonna have now. So this is a part of one meal. Two, three, four, five, six. Snacks. Probably have some crackers in between as well. Um, and yeah, this is part of the yogurt meal as well. And that's uh, definitely reaching up near that 5,000 calories. But like I said, guys, this is not even that unhealthy. It's actually quite healthy. Some, A lot of the foods I'll definitely include in my cut. Now, this is the point I'm trying to make that a lot of people get tied up on the fact of cutting. When they want to lose weight, they think it's all about eating healthy. Now, you can eat healthy like I'm doing and still put on weight. Now, this is the whole point. If I want to put on lean, quality muscle, I'm going to be eating exactly the same stuff. Uh, but obviously, everything is going to be measured. Just going to reach over my calorie expenditure, which is what my body just burns in a day. All right, so I'm just going to give my body that small surplus of calories for my muscles uh, to have building blocks essentially to build themselves. Now, if I eat too much, the body's going to recognize it as too much fuel and obviously store it if it's not getting used up. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm showing you guys that you can definitely eat a lot of healthy stuff and still put on fat. Just want to make another quick point that eating this food uh, and getting this fat or putting on as much weight as I hope to be putting on definitely isn't healthy for the body and like I said before it's with healthy food so imagine if I was eating unhealthy food and how quickly uh, I could put on the weight so this is with healthy food that I'm obviously forcing into my body as well some people might not be forcing their uh, body with all this food but they might be doing certain traits that I know that are bad for me but a lot of people actually don't know that are bad for them uh, so even if it's with healthy food, like I said before, that confusion with healthy food and weight loss, it's definitely all screwed up. So as long as I can get your head around that, that eating healthy food, you can definitely put on weight and that's exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, I might chuck in a few sugary filled things as well, just to speed up the process. But just imagine if your diet mainly was consuming a lot of high sugary foods and how quickly you could put on the weight if I'm putting on this much weight this quick with healthy food. Taking the kiddies to school on my second meal. Rice and chicken and veggies. Yep, don't have time. Gotta take these buggers to school. Protein ball. Nah, I'm just kidding, it's not slow mo. <laughs> uh, bit of rice and mince. Another 450, 500 calories. I'm actually starting to not get hungry, like I'm actually losing my appetite a little bit just because there's that much food uh, going on. 
So the way I'm going to combat this so I actually do get hungry is introduce a bit of sugar so I get that spike and drop. Now I'm negatively using this to my advantage if that makes sense but because I'm purposely trying to put on fat. But what I want to get at as a point is some people do this just generally and they don't actually realize what's happening. So that sugar spike that they don't even realize what's happening is making them hungry and that's why they want to eat more and most likely eat in an excess and I mean it's not their fault like sometimes what you don't know is what you don't know um, and if you get that spike and, you, uh, spike and drop and then you're hungry again so you gotta eat and sometimes it's taken the wrong way as well um, people get told just eat when you're hungry but sometimes that's not the way to go because of that reason protein ball Quarter past six in the morning. Good morning. I've got a bit of rice and mince for brekkie. And a coffee, of course. People are always like, what the hell? Why are you eating rice and mince for breakfast? It's food, ain't it? On that note, the way I usually look at it is you want more protein towards the end of your day, so your meats and stuff, and less protein at the start of the day because it is hard to digest in your body so you don't want to wake up and then just cram your body full of protein so usually your carbs towards uh, the start of the day protein towards the end less carbs towards the end as well you know, so you don't need that energy before you're about to go to bed unlike what I'm doing for this fat log but I'm just eating it all protein ball about to go get my morning coffee and I might even just sneak in a orange flourless cake which is uh, gluten and dairy free as well probably coffee and cake alone is probably like 600 calories yes bit of sugar just uh, get that spike and drop again so I'm hungry for the rest of the day as well and just obviously for the added calories I'm going to one of my favorite favorite coffee places or it's more of a patisserie it's called Montano's for any of you who are in Bayswater you have to go to Montano's it is the bomb. Coffee, 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 coffee. How good does that look? At least 300, 400 calories. But if you can afford a treat and you want to get something absolutely delectable at such a good price, plus a good coffee, they do amazing coffees. Montano's, visit them in Bayswater. Check them out. Protein ball. More rice. <coughs> Currently writing everyone's diet plans to get nice and lean. And I'm currently stuffing my face full of 5,000 calories plus a day to get fat for y'all. What's happening guys? Week two of my fat vlog and I've gained another kilo and a half. Easily done by I guess the 5,000 calories and I think a lot of it is water weight. Uh, that's what carbohydrates can do. It can uh, make you retain water. Uh, but I can definitely see my fat percentage has gone up from my weight. Alright, so again, probably adding a little more to the stomach. Uh, I think the stomach is the first place to come back on and it's probably the last place to leave. This is pretty typical for males and females tend to do the same around the hips and glutes region. Alright, so taking a look from the side, obviously still obliques gone, if not more. Back. Oh, drawing a set of love handles. Week two. Boom. My pre-workout I'm using for today, it is called Dust. See that? Yeah. It's by Blackstone Labs. I'm not doing a review on it or anything, but it is pretty freaking good. Um, one thing about pre-workout, uh, this is just before, obviously as it states in the name, pre-workouts, before you work out, but the only bad thing about it, uh, for what I'm trying to do, is it's a stimulant and therefore it's going to boost your metabolism to such a degree that you kind of lose your appetite at the same time, so kind of not good for me. Get it, get it in there, man, get it in there. Yogurt! So you gotta get it with big bad can. Can, how's that yogurt? Fat prick. <laughs> I should probably have more. This is terrible. Should definitely get more. We didn't increase my calories the other day. Haven't can hit 5k yet, so we gotta find some more food. I'm gonna have to edit out those now. <laughs> <laughs> right. How are you doing? Popcorn. Can't get anything gluten, that's what. Oh yeah.
500 calories per 100 grams. Can't forget your chocolate milk. Chowing down some Kin noodles. It's about 800 calories, including the yogurt, another 400, and all my other goodies to top that right over the 5,000 calories. Yo, it's a Saturday, and I've woken up a little bit later than you, I usually would during the week. So during the week, I'd usually wake up at about 5 on a Saturday and Sunday, wake up at about 7.30, so a bit of a sleep in. But it also means less time to fit the meals in, or at least my morning meals. Uh, so less time means more food to cram in in a smaller time, and I'm feeling real full to get to those 5,000 calories, but I'll get there. Good beef and mash. Training ain't going so bad. Look like a fat idiot, but strength going up. Hopefully I don't lose it by the cut. It's a sausage and you tell me it's tomorrow. You know I ate it right. Everybody on this table is bulking. We're all getting fat ass. Fat! Sitting in centurions, including Ken. Look at his shame. It's like 300 calories. Woo! Jess, Jess is on a diet though. My diet's cheap. going good. Yeah. Cheap, yeah. We're all getting fat though. Us three boys. <laughs> Fruit. Chocolate. Warren. <laughs> Blue free pancakes with the ball ball. That'll be me. That'll be him. Throwing in a sneaky Sunday meal. I'm about to tell you what I'm eating today. It's a bit uh, naughtier than usual, but just an example of how to get some high calories happening. If you can guess what it is by my description in the next sentence, you're a legend. Three to four, even maybe 500 calories per slice. Yes, talking about pizza. Big bad meat lovers. Probably go through this, or at least half of it. And easily that's sitting up around your two grand, two and a half. Because I do wake up a lot later on a Sunday, got to accumulate those calories in a shorter amount of time. So thought, why not? But I'm not eating pizza all the time. Otherwise, you might be thinking, well, that's hey, you definitely got fat. So to reiterate, one of the main points I'm trying to make is not only is eating healthy food uh, you can definitely put on weight eating healthy food, but just different foods with different calories, like for example, the pizza I was eating. Um, and the size of it and how many calories you can get because of what's in it. So your cheeses, your sauces um, And just the oils and everything obviously all of those ingredients have fats and that's how it uh, accumulates so much uh, calories But it comes down to in the end the amount of calories that you have Okay, so the total amount all right, portion size is key and this is where the screwed up misconception comes from that they think just eating healthy is gonna lose them weight, but it's not. You can definitely be on a cut and have some naughty foods here and there, but let's say to cut, I had to eat 2,000 calories. There is no way I'm touching pizza purely for the fact that if I have two slices, there's more than a quarter of my day gone. All right, I'm going, going to be starving for the rest of the day, okay? That's the point. So you're just going to get all this energy, then you're going to drop down, then you're going to feel like crap. Uh, and for that reason, you may even just veer off your diet and not st uh, stick to it whatsoever. All right, so the strategy here is to pretty much feed yourself with foods that's going to make you last the entire day, but still sticking in the criteria or the guidelines of your cut and your calories including the right macronutrients, so your protein, carbs, and fats. All right, portion size is key. Chris, where are we going? Here we go. Yogurt. What kind of yogurt? Hey, Dallas. Where do you? Dallas. Here is my lunch for today. It is 12 p.m., so midday. And I'm currently at about 2,500 calories. And I just finished up my hot morning yoga session. First time I've ever been. It was hot yoga in Bayswater. Anyone that's interested in yoga uh, from beginner to advanced, you've got to check this out. It's freaking awesome. 
definitely loosened me up and since I do have a lot more energy with a lot more calories I'm training a little heavier a little harder and a little more so very very tight and if uh, you feel tight just in general check out hot yoga it was awesome really loosens you up probably not the best uh, for fluid and stuff but you can de get that back quite easy um, obviously that's going to restrict my weight gain just in terms of fluid though so still with the excessive calories that I am eating I definitely will be putting on fat for all of you just want to make out a quick point for that lunch I just had before so that was quite lean only sitting around about 250 calories uh, and I'm obviously gonna have to make up for that now with other stuff like yeah, gluten-free bread and whatever else I was having uh, in terms of carbohydrates to get those calories up uh, also I wanted to address as the weekend just passed uh, coming into week number three it's almost halfway um, there's no drinking whatsoever all right so I'm not gonna be able to blame uh, any weight gain on alcohol okay so no alcohol for the eight weeks so pretty much everything is just purely for the fact of excessive calories and majority of which are healthy and that's the exact point I'm trying to prove a bit of peanut butter and honey on gluten free toast and of course my good old coconut water what's happening guys week three and damn I'm putting on a lot of fat the line's gone uh, just filling out everywhere <laughs> it's getting pretty sad uh, Everything going, the side on, back. Oof, those love handles are coming and on just fine. Week three. So I'm weighing in at about 107 now. All right, so since I started, put on a kilo each week, uh, which is just a little bit slower than I anticipated. Uh, so probably we'll have to up the calories a little more. Hey, another chicken and broccoli and green peas meal. Only sitting around 250 calories, but that's where I chuck this bad boy in as well. Two crackers of peanut butter and honey is topping up another 320 calories. And I had another protein before, which is another 150. You know, it's uh, way up above 600 calories. Boom. Mo crackers. Protein bowl. I want to make a quick point as well. Some of you may be thinking, well, of course you're going to be putting on fat at 5,000 calories. Now, my 5,000 calories may be a little different to yours, uh, really depending on your gender, uh, age, and weight and activity level as well. All right, so where mine sits, if I wanted to put on uh, lean mass, so lean muscle, I'd still be eating around four and a half thousand, maybe even 4,200 to keep it real lean. All right, so that excessive 500 that I don't need, that's the reason why I'm putting on uh, so much fat uh, so quick as well. So that's the food I just don't need, um, which I'm eating or forcing in. If anything, I'm probably eating a little over 5,000, but my 5,000 could be equivalent to, let's say, someone sitting at about 75 uh, kilos, and let's say they're training four times a week, that could be their equivalent of 3,000 calories. All right, I'll show you in another clip uh, of what these... Uh, what foods look like in terms of calories compared comparing good and bad food all right so what the sizes are of bad food and how they compare to the sizes of good food in terms of calories bit of peanut butter and honey on gluten-free toast and of course my good old coconut water this is my post-workout meal a bit of rice chicken veggies peanut butter and honey on of course gluten-free toast and I'm chucking a bit of extra mayo, full fat of course, those extra calories. Uh, plus a protein shake I'm about to have is going to top over about, I think about 550 calories. just want to say one thing while I'm stuffing my face full of all these calories. Kind of getting uh, uh, a bit sad putting on all this fat because I usually control my calories uh, to a T. So don't get me wrong, it's so easy to eat all this food, pretty good, my strength's going up, weight's going up, obviously aesthetic's going down and that's the sad part. Um, so yeah, some people don't even try because uh, they're not watching their food and stuff. But uh, yeah, I know my fat's definitely going up because of the excess of calories, bit sad, but doing a few and then uh, hopefully just to cut it again. So something I definitely would not advise, if you can bulk lean all right, find out your calorie expenditure and if you want to build muscle find out exactly what you have to have just to put on enough muscle all right, don't eat in an excess um, because of the amount of weight that I'm putting on now I probably won't get much gain out of it by the end of the cut like 
probably lose all my strength again because of how quickly I'm going up and then straight back down again. So something I definitely uh, would not advise uh, anyone to do. I have a new deadbolt to fit to my door at the front of the gym. Now, what the hell does that have to do with me putting on weight, you ask? Well, someone went through my car last night. Uh, I accidentally left it open. They've uh, just rummaged through my car and actually taken uh, the remote to my alarm at the gym. Now, that's actually caused me to stress out. The only thing uh, that I'm trying to get at here is increasing stress, increased cortisol, which is a hormone that can cause weight gain. So I'm pretty pissed about it, but I thought I may as well log it and just let you know that uh, that's probably going to be another contributing factor. Um, that someone has access to turning my alarm on and off. So if you come to the gym, please lock your car as well. Good old chicken, rice and veggies again with my added mayo for those increased calories. And no, it's not uh, low fat, it is all fat. Now, I'm also going to add some what's called uh, Brain Octane by Bulletproof. Um, pretty good, usually put it in coffee, but it, essentially it's just coconut oil uh, concentrated. So, coconut oil in itself, you can use it for so many different applications, including uh, like a salad dressing, cooking with it, so stuff doesn't stick to the pan. And it is one of the healthiest oils you can actually have. But, it being an oil, it is fat and it accumulates calories very, very, very quickly. Uh, so just be wary of that and uh, yeah, go easy on it. So when you do add it, just know that it is high in calories. Uh, so I thought I might slip that in there as well. I'm also going to be having some crackers with the peanut butter and honey just to get those calories up. So, it's coming close to week four and I've almost hit four kilos. It's so a little bit slower than I anticipated, but that's four weeks and I've literally put on this and this this is what I'm feeling this is fucking crazy I'm actually feeling a lot heavier just walking and everything that I do including lifting weights and stuff especially if it's body weight just four kilos and I'm feeling it that's crazy to think though but nope almost week four Slam in one of these bad boys loaded with dairy so not too great for my skin I'm definitely gonna kick the dairy uh, once I do go on the cut I think uh, but still to be decided and on to meal number four and it's 12. Going for a bit of a shot find all the variations of food that I wouldn't buy on a cut things like full fat mayonnaise instead of light. One of these whole blocks is 1000 calories I know it's pretty big, but just so you can see the comparison. Some oat bars. For example, one of these bars is 350 calories. It's only about the size of half my hand. And it's worth one of my normal meals. Just some home brand cookies. Four biscuits, one meal, 400 calories. This whole bag of nuts, I'm sure you wouldn't go through in one sitting, but if you did, or you did across the whole day, it's 2,250 calories. That's, that's almost half of my bulking day. Now imagine if you were sitting on 3,000 calories, and you at least had half, there's a third of your day gone just on nuts. Wow, these things are nice, with such quality products in them. Carrot, cucumber, celery, zucchini, goldburn, valley pear, lemongrass, chlorophyll. I mean, reading that you think, oh, that's going to taste like absolute green rubbish, but it is half decent. <laughs> oh, what have I come to? I don't even know how to start this way in, other than this is getting depressing because I'm getting to the point of eating food and I know I'm getting fatter and it's getting that much harder for me to eat the food that I know I don't need. It is craziness. So, I've actually put on a little bit more than a kilo this week, so we're pretty much caught up. Uh, it being halfway, so week number four, I've actually gained five kilos. All right, so that's pretty much where we want to be, almost exactly. Uh, the last week, I've had to up my calories, like I said in the previous week, so I upped it to about 6,000 calories and I can definitely feel the difference. I mean, I can't even suck in anymore. This is like real sad. 
all the lines are gone, chest is fully filled out, no lines in the shoulders. These love handles are ridiculous. Back, absolutely crazy. And that is a wrap, guys. So, weeks two to four. Now, so we're halfway now, and I'm sitting at 109. And it's not all good weight either, all right? So, obviously, you can see in the aftershots, and as I go, definitely not looking as good as I was, and I'm putting on weight, all right? So, obviously, the fat's filling in the gaps and just making me look like uh, rubbish. Not as good as I thought, though. So, we're going to cover these points very, very quickly, and then we'll go on to the next video. Okay, so point number one, I'm eating a lot of good food. So, a lot of you are probably going to be thinking, of course, you're going to be putting on fat eating that much food. And like I pointed out before, my 5,000 might be a lot different to your, let's say, 3,000 if you're sitting at 75, training around about the same as me, so three to five times a week. I'm obviously training five times a week, but you get where I'm going. So, it's a lot of good food. All right, so remember, good food isn't everything. It's just a lot of it, and my body obviously doesn't need it, therefore it's gonna tuck it away for later. It is pretty hard to eat a lot of good food, and I see people all the time, They sometimes they do actually just go on to, let's say, eating healthy, and they do lose weight, because I almost see it as a fluke, okay? It's very easy to eat a lot uh, of crappy food, because obviously they taste good, they've got sugars, fats that make it, everything taste good and it's easy to eat that but a lot of people find it a lot harder to eat a lot of let's say chicken rice and broccoli and normal aka dinner meals and stuff like that but I've been doing it for a while now so it's really easy for me so for me to get through all that food it's quite easy point number two is sugar all right so you're gonna get that spike drop and you're gonna get those cravings again to pretty much fill in the void of energy that it's gonna pretty much make you drop out at, all right? So the spike in insulin or energy and blood sugar levels, and then you're gonna come crashing down again and start scourging for that food. Number three, if you've got more time in the day, you've got more time to eat, and maybe even more time to scurry for that food that you don't need, all right? So I'm not saying sleep more so there's less time in the day, I'm just saying be aware that the more you're awake, the more chance you've got of feeling hungry if you don't look after yourself and diet properly and really take caution of what you're eating. Point number four, different foods contain different amounts of calories. All right, so let's take that pizza for example. It has a crap load of calories because of the food in it. Now you can make a nice healthy pizza at home or you can go out. Now it's considered unhealthy because of all the preservatives and crap that they put in it, uh, like processed meats and sugary filled crap and the sauces that are just filled with preservatives as well, so that's really bad for you. If you made something at home like that, you're still going to have to use some ingredients with high fats, let's say cheese and oils, and the calories are still going to be there. All right, so preservatives aside, pizza is high in calories. All right, you're going to accumulate those calories very quickly, and that's why sometimes it's a misconception that pizza is unhealthy, but it's not. Okay, just like any other food, it's just got different amounts of calories. Point number five, all right, saunas don't make you lose fat. Okay, whatever you're doing within that sauna, let's say I went to the hot yoga, so it's actually going to help me burn more calories because your thermogenesis is your, your core body temperature is a lot higher. So when you're doing activity, then obviously your calorie expenditure is going to be a lot higher. So if you're in a calorie deficit, it's gonna actually help you lose weight. And that's the only way. The acute effects that a sauna has on you, let's say hot yoga, uh, you're gonna be pretty much losing fluid. Now, I don't want you to look at that as weight loss, okay? So it's not. You're gonna accumulate that fluid straight back as soon as you hydrate, which is good, but a lot of people think that they can just lose weight by going into the sauna, but it's only the thermogenic effect that it has on your calorie expenditure. All right, so it still comes down to diet. Point number six, alcohol. All right, so throughout this fat log, I'm not gonna be drinking alcohol, so you can't blame it on the alcohol uh, that's making me put on weight. All right, but alcohol is bad because, like I've spoken about in other videos, alcohol is another energy source that your body sees as a toxin. So if you consume that and while it's in your system, your body's gonna flip its energy sources to alcohol to make sure it gets rid of that first because it is a toxin. All right, your body wants to get rid of that 
first and foremost, all right? As soon as it get, gets rid of that, then it's gonna switch over to the macronutrient, so your normal protein, carbs, and your fats. So while that's in place, you may have the potential of putting on weight, and you can't burn fat as easy, okay? Or any fat at all, all right? So while alcohol's in your system, no fat burning, no muscle building. Be careful. Point number seven, cortisol. Okay, so cortisol is our stress hormone. I've covered this in another video, so go check out our blog if you want some more information on that. But just to cover it briefly, all right, the higher your cortisol is or the higher your stress levels, the more efficient your body is at putting on fat, especially, take this in, especially around the stomach. Okay, so anytime that your cortisol gets increased, whether it be due to stress or let's say any stimulants that you may have, whether it be coffee or even glycids, there are more cortisol receptors around your stomach area, which is why you may see a lot of people with more stomach fat than anywhere else. All right, so that's in an excess of calories and high cortisol levels equals stomach fat. Right, so if you wanna get your cortisol levels down, either meditate, try not to stress out, be positive, uh, a lot of other things. Jump across to our blog before I go on for too long to get more information on how to reduce cortisol and ultimately control your fat burn. And that's a wrap guys, halfway now, so another four weeks left, I'm at 109. I'm gonna keep going, so 114 is going to be our 10 kilo mark uh, of weight increase. Okay, so we're gonna speed through it a lot faster now, so instead of every day, might have every couple or a few days uh, advancing. I've pretty much given you all the information you need. I might uh, just cover a few more points and we're gonna jump straight to the weigh-ins so you can see how I'm looking. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you liked the video, guys. Jump across to our YouTube channel and give that a subscribe to keep up to date on our weekly motivation and tips to help you on your weight loss journey. Also, take a look at the videos down below for some humor, some laughs, and some free workouts and more motivation. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.